My dearly beloved in Christ, I would like this morning to concentrate on the second of two parables that our Lord speaks in today's gospel. The first is of the mustard seed, but the second one is probably the shortest parable that our Lord spoke. And the entire parable goes like this. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and buried in three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. So a very short story or simile, parable we call them, comparing the kingdom of heaven, which is the church, to something that the people could relate to. In this case, yeast or leaven. <clears throat> How is our spiritual life to be compared to the leaven? Well, why do we use yeast or some kind of leaven in dough? So that the bread is not so dense, so that it fluffs up, it expands. And this is symbolic of the fact that our spiritual life also should grow. The leaven would be the grace of God. And the grace of God comes to us from different sources. First, there is the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Every time we attend Mass devoutly, we unite ourselves with the priest in offering the Mass. And again, we are attentive and devout. We gain many, many graces. Second, and also very important, are the sacraments. Making frequent confessions, humble, sincere confessions, and doing so again frequently. And second, receiving our Lord in Holy Communion often, and doing so with devotion, with a good preparation before Communion, and a devout thanksgiving afterwards. These are the primary channels of God's grace, the Mass and the Sacraments. So by making use of them, with the proper dispositions, with the proper preparation, with the proper devotion and attention, we gain amazing graces, wonderful graces. And nothing else can really supply for the graces of the Mass and the Sacraments. Prayer is very important. We also need a good prayer life. But if someone were to be away from the sacraments for a lengthy period of time, he would not be able to persevere in maintaining the life of grace. So the sacraments, prayer, our daily rosary, our morning and night prayers, our spiritual reading, our other devotions, prayer is very important. And another means in the spiritual life of grace is devotion to our Blessed Mother. After all, she is the mediatrix of all graces. That is, that God does not give us any graces that do not pass through Our Lady's hands. And so, by fostering a devotion to her, we have that wonderful means of obtaining graces from Almighty God. Now, today is the Feast of St. Albert. And St. Albert the Great lived in the 13th century. I believe he died in the year 1280. So it gives you an idea when he lived. And he was a Dominican. Now the Dominican order had been founded in the early part of that century by St. Dominic. So he entered the order when it was young. And he wanted to become a priest. But this young man, Albert, was struggling with his studies to learn what was necessary to be able to become a priest. And he was very discouraged. And he was even being tempted to just give up his vocation, just return to the world and quit trying to become a priest because he had such difficulties. But again, he was very devout to Our Lady. And one day as he was praying to Our Blessed Mother, struggling with these temptations to give up his vocation, this discouragement, Our Lady appeared to him. And she said, Albert, my son, because you are devout to me, I am going to give you wisdom and knowledge. You know, we call Our Lady the seat of wisdom. I am going to give you not only enough knowledge and wisdom to be able to be ordained, 
but even so much so that you will be looked upon all over Europe as a master. And indeed he was. But she said to him, as a proof or a sign to you that this is a gift from me, I'm going to take it away shortly before your death. Two years before you die, you're going to lose all of this knowledge and wisdom that has been given to you. And he always remembered that. He lived a long life. But one day, he got up in the pulpit and he was going to give a sermon and his mind just drew a blank. He couldn't remember what he had prepared to speak about, what he had studied and read. It just went out of his mind and he just had a blank mind and he knew that means his time is at hand. And he got down from the pulpit, didn't give the sermon, obviously, and prepared for death and did die two years later. But it's an interesting story which shows us what our Blessed Mother can do for her children, for those who love and honor her. In this case, she gave him great knowledge, so great that he became the tutor, the teacher of St. Thomas Aquinas and was considered, again, a master of theology and philosophy and the sciences throughout Europe. But especially he was devout to her. He became a holy man, became a bishop, and became a canonized saint. And it was his devotion to Our Lady that helped a great deal. So we have to make use of the means of grace so that the leaven of God's grace in our souls will help us to expand spiritually. That we will take that grace of God that we received at baptism and it needs to grow. And there's no end. There's no point at which we cannot grow in grace. We have to continue to make progress. We can never be satisfied with where we are and say, well, I'm happy with where I'm at in the spiritual life. I don't need to, to grow at all. I'll just stay right where I'm at. Because the spiritual writers tell us that if we remain motionless in the spiritual life, if we come to a plateau and don't try to advance, then we will slide back. The law of the spiritual life is growth, movement. There's no stationary, no remaining stationary. If you had a pond of water and there was no inflow of fresh water, and the outflow, so the water was not being recirculated, and it just sat there, it would become stagnant. And if you drank from that pond, even though at one point the water is perfectly clear, you'd get sick, because there's no motion, there's no movement of the water, and it becomes stagnant. And that is what it is like in the spiritual life if we become satisfied to just stay where we're at and not worry about trying to grow and improve and increase the grace of God in our soul, through, again, the sacraments, our prayer life, our acts of charity and the fulfilling the works of mercy and so forth. So that's how we can take this parable of the leaven. Just as the, the dough that has been leavened expands until it is baked, so we also must grow spiritually. And it is the grace of God that will do that, but it requires our efforts our determination to become holy, to continue to improve, and never to be satisfied with where we are at. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.